Yes, people, how are we doing? Ricky here from Behind the Bars TV. Hope you're all fit and well. Yeah, I'd just like to say a thanks to all my subscribers. It's now over 10,000. Um, so, like I say, thanks for your continuing support, yeah, for the views and the subscriptions. But in this episode, I'm going to talk about one of Ireland's most violent prisoners. Now, this is just something I've come across. Um, what somebody has actually sent us an email and asked us if I could do a story on Stephen Penrose from Dublin. Now, there might be mixed reviews from people in Ireland who are actually been in the prison system and they know who the most dangerous inmates are and the most respected and the most feared. But until I know who these people are, I'll just do the videos on the ones that I come across or the ones that people have sent me emails or messages and asked us to do videos on them. So the one I'm doing today is <clears throat> Stephen Penrose, who's 38 for, from Dublin. And he's serving a life sentence for murder. But this isn't his first murder. He's actually, he's committed two murders. Um, the first one was in 2010. <clears throat> which was, he actually just got con he just got done for manslaughter on this one. He went to trial um, for the murder of David Shorty, 28 year old from Navin in County Meath. Um, and what happened in this one, they were having, he went to rob him, because um, Penrose was actually using heroin at the time. And he went to the house of David Sharkey to buy heroin. Well, he, he thought he was going to, Sharkey thought he was going to buy heroin, but he was actually going to rob him. So when he's getting to the house, or flat, sorry, he's where he's took the drugs. I think it's it said it was an ounce of heroin. And obviously he didn't have the money to give him. So Sharky has pulled out a knife and went from and said he wanted his money back. He's threatened him with the knife. Says he wants his money or he wants the drugs back. Um, and he's went and it says, because I just read a little bit up in the papers, it says that he went towards Penrose with a slashing motion. Yeah, towards his face. And Penrose has had his own fucking knife. So he's pulled out a little pen knife. And he's actually stabbed him 13 times in a frenzied attack. He's plunged him up 13 times. Um, but after that, he's actually cleaned the scene up. Reversed his car up near the flat. And put him in the boot of his car. And this is how he actually got caught. Because I think he, he got found with the body in the boot of his car. So that was, he went to trial on that. He went to trial for murder. He admitted to manslaughter. He admitted to everything. <clears throat> he admitted to doing it. He didn't deny it, but he, um, he didn't admit to murder. He admitted to manslaughter, but obviously the defense wouldn't accept it. Uh, the prosecution, sorry. The prosecutor wouldn't accept the plea, the guilty plea. So they've went to trial um, and he's actually won the case and he just got, he got found not guilty on the murder and he got a guilty on manslaughter, which he received a nine year sentence for. Um, but whilst he was in prison, obviously he's had a bit of a name in the prison because he's always fighting with screws, attacking screws, fighting with other inmates. Um, and he'd, he'd been released after... I think it was six or seven year. And um, his second murder was in 2016, which he was given a life sentence for. But um, on this one, it was a lad called Philip Finnegan. And this happened in County Kildare. He actually killed his friend, stabbed him up, cut him up and buried him in a shallow grave. Um, I think he went to trial on that one as well. Obviously, he was found guilty on the murder and sentenced to life in prison. So uh, he's getting his life sentence for that one, and he's ended up in Mountjoy Prison. 
So I'll just tell you a little bit about Mountjoy Prison. So Mountjoy is the nickname all the local people that get sent there, the local villains, the lads. It's called the Joy. It's a medium security prison, which has got 570 men in. And it was actually opened in 1850, some 172 year old. So I'd imagine it's a bit like our local prison, a bit like Durham prison. Um, it said it was, it was built a bit like Pentonville, which is down in London, which is an old Victorian prison. But Mountjoy is in Dublin city. And uh, like I say, it's a medium security prison. Um, and the lads normally get sent there from the courts and then they get moved on. But uh, Penrose has been in the prison and obviously he's fighting with the screws and he's been put on a special unit um, and he's locked up for like 23 hours a day because he's so hard to handle in the prison. They've put him on the unit and kept him away from the other prisoners and the staff because he's obviously that violent towards them. And he's also, he's been on a dirty protest um, and a dirty protest is when you shit on your hand and you smear it all over the walls, smear it all over yourself. And that is called a dirty protest. And he's doing that protest against the conditions that they've got him in because they've got him in 23 hour bang up every day. Um, and I'm keeping him away from the other prisoners. But normally someone who's been given a life sentence will get moved from the joy on a wheat field, the Midlands or Port Port Louis, I think, or Port Louis, I think it's pronounced. So they normally get moved on to them prisons, but there's no prison in Ireland will accept Penrose because of his violent behaviour, because he's fighting against the screws. Um, he's even had run-ins with the other prisoners, and he's had run-ins with the Kinahans and the Dundons. So obviously. They're keeping him segregated probably for his own safety as well because if he's got trouble with the likes of them gangs, um, I've heard what they're all about in the prison. So they're, if they're under him, he's not going to stand much of a chance in there. But um, he's been moved. Like I said, none of the prisons would accept him, but he's just recently been moved over the past few months, I think it was, um, to Cork Prison. And Cork Prison is a relatively new prison. Well, the, the new side of it, it's called New Cork Prison, um, which is six year old. It's got built in 2016 and it houses 275 male prisoners. And that is also a medium security prison. And uh, the old Cork Prison was opened in the 1800s and it was used as a, um, like a military barracks, a military prison. But it was, it was changed, it uh, got uh, transferred over to the Ministry of Justice in 1972. And that was when it became a prison, like a normal prison. Um, but that got shut down in 2016 when the new one opened up. But he's been sentenced to this prison because all the other prisons were refusing to accept him. But I would like to hear from some of me Irish subscribers just what your thoughts are on here, yeah, Penrose, and whether he does deserve that title and deserve that name to be one of Ireland's most violent prisoners. But obviously, if he's in all the papers and he's not allowed to be moved to any other prison, prison won't accept him. I mean, I've come across prisoners myself whilst I was in prison um, that are too hard to handle in the prison. They haven't got a name as such on the outside of prison, as in like most of the high profile gangsters have you hear of them. But some of these lads get sent to prison um, and they get a bit of a name for themselves in the prison for attacking screws, for being violent, fighting with other inmates. So I'm just wondering whether Penrose is that type of prisoner or whether or not he's uh, well liked or not well liked. But I'd like to hear people's thoughts on this one. But yeah. Uh, He's obviously a very dangerous man if he's there. Uh, he's been caught, well, he's committed two murders. I know the first one was a manslaughter, but stabbing a man 13 times is definitely a murder. You've obviously murdered somebody. Even though he's got done with a manslaughter, you would still 
if you're talking with someone, you say, oh, he's murdered somebody. It's definitely a, a murder. But um, obviously the second murder, I don't know whether he was involved in gangs, it must have been about drugs again, but he's uh, quite a vicious one when he's cut him up, especially if it was meant to have been his friend and he's actually cut him up and just buried him in a shallow grave. But it did say on that, um, on that court case, when he went to court, he actually got the lad's mother up and cross-examined her um, and put her through that ordeal just to try and try and get off with that, I suppose. But, yeah, well, it's be good to see what other people's thoughts are. But, um, yeah, if there's anyone else got any other stories that you would like us to share, just drop us an email or get in touch through Instagram or something. Um, all my links are in the description of this video. But if you do like me videos, please like and subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll not miss another video that I upload. But I'm in the middle of doing a lot of podcasts at the minute. I've just uploaded one yesterday um, about someone, uh, Jamie Morgan Kane, who spent 34 years in an American prison. So if you want to go back on my previous video and have a look at that, uh, but that was my first podcast, so bear with us if it was a little bit quiet because I didn't have the right microphone set up. I've got my new microphones on this one, which is hidden under here. Hopefully it sounds a lot clearer. But um, I'll leave that one there for now, people. Hopefully you're liking the content. Take care.